Welcome to the first episode of Curmudgeons in Cars Having Crisis. And today... I'll give you crisis. What are we doing this for? We, we're I'm trying to have a peaceful drive. What are it, you doing? To this afternoon. And I say that because we're late for an 11 o'clock appointment. We're driving a 30-year-old 528 BMW that's been part of the Fogues' family folklore for fucking ages. Can you get it right? It's over 35 years old. It's a 528i. On today's drive... And we're not late. We're just getting there at a different time. That's right. We're off to SimWorks to try out their new simulators. And I'm pretty excited about it. And I know folks isn't. I'm beside myself. <laughs> well, I'm over here and you're there. Yeah. So who's driving? Now look at that. An idiot. idiot. What is the matter with this? It's like New York. Look, it, it, typi typical of old Datsun Pulsar drivers. You know, the thing's probably 111 years old. Hadn't seen a roadworthy for 20 years. And it's meandering all over the freeway like a drunk. Probably is. I really like this car, folks. It's um, it's got lots of airiness to it. The the, the side pillars are so small. It's unlike your uh, Senator, which is um, the Desta. It's huge, mm. like uh, bulky sort of pillars. That no wonder people have accidents. They can't see out of the things. And suddenly you realise how much glass there is in these older cars. It's lovely. It's beautifully airy. Compact. It's a classic. So it's nice. We're, we're living a bygone down. era, and it's got a couple of nice little modifications just to. It's a uh, bit of make history, it nicer though, to drive. A bit of history. Well, it is. It was the family car, it was my father's car, which of course he never, ever, ever let me drive it when I was a. I can understand why. Yeah, possibly in hindsight, a good decision. The back but, is roomy, considering. Well, yeah, really, <laughs> yeah. Compared to a mini. Yeah, for a mini, for, for a, yeah, a light car these days, it would be roomy. No, it's surprisingly compact. But it was bought from the factory in Munich on a, you know, straight inspect delivery over there. My parents went over for three years, and they drove it all around Europe, and they brought it back with them, and it's been running around. My old man used to drive it up to. Camber and back to Melbourne every week. He was a senior public servant and the department got shifted up to Canberra and mum, no way she wanted to move from Canberra, uh, from Melbourne to Canberra, so dad used to commute every week. So uh, it's got nearly 250,000 kilometres on the, on the clock here. On the original engine it did at least 220,000 kilometres. Late in its life it didn't do much mileage no more than going up to the shop and shops and back because the old man was ailing. These were the sorts of cars, run. folks, that you could have, you know, planned a holiday in Europe. You, you don't want to hear the heart-rending story of why my father didn't drive this Well, I've only got a 64 gigabot, I, gigabot iPhone. They don't make them any larger. Well, it's germane because the fact that it wasn't run very much led to the demise of the first engine because it had a head, cracked head gasket, which we didn't know about, and it cracked the block. I'll give you cracked heads. I'll give you a cracked head. We should be smoking some cracked heads going down here. That will decommudgeon us. We'll probably get a faster lap time on the simulator. But these cars, these were the sorts of cars that you could go and easily tour the BMW factory in Munich and then drive around for, I think, what, six months or something and bring it back duty free. Isn't that how it worked? Yeah, but they have the, a, a buy and drive program. Mm -hmm. It would have been exactly. perfect for a family holiday. Well, it's not very big, yet on one trip at least, they managed to stuff my three siblings, two sisters and a little brother, and my grandmother in the back. So there were four people in the back of this car <laughs> with no leg room to speak of and no width. So, I mean, it's highly illegal now, of course, because there's only two seat belts. But, but there's no, not they much went, leg room. And apparently they were, you know, happy as. I mean, you remember when you were a kid, you know, the way you used to get stuffed in a car, you know, the whole family loaded in. Comfort was a secondary consideration for the kids, you know, half the time you'd be lying on the parcel shelf 
or if you had a station wagon, you know, you'd be in the back. <laughs> Are you on the run at all? Because there's teeth marks. There's there teeth to, marks on the leather. See, and what does be, that mean? There used to be, on the original seats, on the original back of the original driver's seat, there were teeth marks. That was from my little brother when they were going on this grand tour. He decided he liked the taste of, you know, poison <laughs> leather, or the treatment was poison, and uh, he sucked on that. And the teeth marks are still there on the original seat. He didn't suffer any ill effect, apparently. Well, not that we can tell. <laughs> it's all relative in your family, though, isn't it? You could say that. So, folks... What do you think about simulators? We're going off to play some stuff. I, I, I get the feeling you're not a game-playing man, although you do have a lot of gadgets at home, and perhaps if you're ready to give this a bit of a go, because I, I think it's a bit of East meets West. The technology is trickling down, is it not? From Formula One and simulators and all sorts of things into the hands of... In fact, we just saw, the, we just saw a little bit of the... Real Racing 3 being demonstrated on the new iPhone in San Francisco um, on the uh, the keynote presented by an Australian and yeah okay it's not exactly perfectly realistic but it's it is running on a phone well simulators are the future of motorsport driver training and car setup the Formula 1 teams have very very sophisticated simulators now that all the drivers use to practice because they can't do any testing of. Teams use them for establishing, establishing a baseline setup along with all their computer data. And even some V8 teams are starting to look at, at simulators because of the severe testing restrictions. So, you know, it's a pretty handy tool. You're right, I've never been a gamer. Um, when I first tried, you know, video games, they just didn't make sense to me because there's no feel. It wasn't getting any feedback. So, it just wasn't anything like driving a race car to me. But these new simulators um, you know, now apparently do give you feedback and a sense of uh, of weight, you know, through the steering wheel and you, you're feeling forces and all that. So yeah, I'm, 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 you know, I'm interested to see what it's like. I think it will be interesting. And, and this obviously is, you know, a home version. It's not the full Monty, but it'll, you know, by all accounts. It's still a pretty, uh, a pretty persuasive experience, I'm told. I uh, tried one uh, at, uh, at Danny Bazadik's uh, uh, Western General Body Works operation about a month ago, and I was astounded by how how good it was. It, it was, you know, it had the right chair, it had a Motec in front, it had the full like sequential shifter set up on the side, you know, the triple screen. The software seemed to work really well, and I was running an, uh, an, a uh, Maserati MC12 GT1 car around Spa, and I just thought it was just uh, spot on. I, I think I mentioned it on the on the podcast once before, but it was just good. And I thought, wow, for fifteen thousand dollars, people initially go fifteen thousand dollars, but hang on, you know, to dissect fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> they don't say it quite like that, but once you dissect that price. You're getting a fair bit of stuff. We want to. You, you will. Fifteen That's grand it. to play games. <laughs> well, you might be saying on the return journey. Oh, I can fit one of these in my lounge room. I think the question is whether you missed the turn off. Oh, well, I don't you know. You plugged why. it in. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, I know where to turn off. I don't know why they said that. Maybe it's the back way in. It's, it's an M3 dandelion. This is only a five to eight. There's an M1, there's an M2. That's right. In Sydney, there's an M2, an M4, and an M7. But I think you'll find it pretty interesting, and I'll, I'll be interested to find out about the different software packages around, because I think these guys are solely in, pretty much in the business of making the, the, the mechanical component. You know, putting the computer in, then you load what you want. Um, and having seen that iRacing stuff the other day, uh, I was surprised how fluid it looked uh, from a, basically a, a live a live uh, stream of what was going in the race um, that Fane, Fane Shan Gisbergen was winning. Well, got to win something. <laughs> you Can you do. hear my eyes glazing over? Uh, folks, <laughs> I think it's time to look at the lovely scenery. 
and um, we'll get back to you when we're snappy again. Yeah. Buzz off. <laughs>